Hey there, in this video we are going to look at simplifying rational expressions. In other words, taking algebraic fractions and writing equivalent forms of those fractions, including simplest form. Looking at rational expressions, they can be simplified in much the same way as you can simplify rational numbers or fractions. And this can be accomplished by dividing both the numerator and denominator by common factors. Or, in other words, what people call this often is reducing rational expressions. Often it helps to factor first to help identify common factors. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples that we have down below here. This first one. So again, the easiest way to simplify these is to first write them in factored form. Write the numerator in factored form, write the denominator in factored form. That numerator has a common factor of 4, so I could write it as 4 times x minus 2, if I factor out that 4. On the bottom, the denominator actually also has a common factor of 4. If I factor out that 4, I get 3x minus 8. When you look at this fraction in factored form here, the numerator is two things multiplied this and this. The denominator is two things multiplied this and this. So if both of them have a common factor, we can divide the top and the bottom by 4. If I divide the top and the bottom, I could write it like this, divide by 4, divide by 4. I can just cross those out then. And what I'm going to be left with is x minus 2 over 3x minus 8. This fraction right here is going to be the same as that original fraction if I substitute in any value of x that's permitted. This is just in simpler terms because you've divided out the factor of 4. Just like if you have a fraction such as 6 eighths. 6 eighths, you could write that as 2 times 3 over 2 times 4. They have a common factor of 4. You can divide the top and the bottom by 2 and you end up with just 3 over 4. Some people, when you write it in factored form, the advantage there is you just cross out what's in common. All right, let's do another one here. This thing, we write the top and the bottom in factored form. The top is a, mo a monomial already. So that is already more or less in the form that we can work with here. The bottom being a binomial, we'll write it in factored form. The first thing always to look for is if it has a common factor. 6x squared and 18x definitely does have a common factor. It's 6x. So if I, on the bottom, write what's left here, I'm going to have x plus 3. All right, so the bottom I have several factors there. I have a 6, I have an x, and I have an x plus 3. You need to treat that x plus 3 as a single number. Now to reduce it, we can look for things that the top and the bottom has in common. Over here, we've had a 4. Both of them had a 4. We could divide by 4. If I look at the top and the bottom there, that and this definitely have something in common. You can divide them both by 6x. If I divide this by 6x, of course I get 1. If I divide this by 6x, I'm going to get 2x squared. One of the x's disappears, and you divide both those coefficients. What I'm left with, then, is going to be 2x squared over just x plus 3. This rational expression is a simplified version of this rational expression, except that now the numerator and denominator don't have any common factors anymore. We'll do this one, right in factored form first. 5x x plus 2 and on the bottom the common factor is a 2 and you're left with x plus 2. Now if you look at these two things these don't have anything in common. There's no 2 that's a common factor, there's no 5 that's a common factor, and there's no x that's a common factor. But what you do have as a common factor is this x plus 2. Whatever x is those two numbers are going to be identical. So I could divide the top and the bottom by x plus 2, or in other words, these are just going to be gone. If I divide the top and the bottom by x plus 2, that divides to 1. And I'm just left with 5x 
over 2. You can try substituting in a number here and substituting in a number here and you'll see that you'll get the same value. All right, let's look at the last three here. Again, it's going to be hard to reduce these things without doing some factoring first. I know you might be tempted to say, well, look at this, there's an x squared and an x squared. Can't I just cross those two things off and maybe this 2 and this 2? You can't just cross off part of something that has more than one term. This has three terms. This has three terms. You can't cross off part of a binomial or a trinomial. That would be the same as if you had a fraction that was like 246 and you were dividing it by 33 or something like that. And if you said, hey, this 6 and this 3 can divide to 2 and 1, you can't cross off part of a three-digit number. You need to have a factor of the entire thing. You can't cross off part of something there. You can't cross off part of something up here. So what we need to do is what we did before, which is write it in factored form. This doesn't have a GCF, a common factor. There's nothing you can divide all three of those terms by, but you can factor it as two binomials like x minus 2, x plus 1. And the bottom you can do a similar thing, x minus 2, x minus 1. And then you can look to eliminate some common factors. It has x minus 2 those are identical to each other. Whatever x was, let's say x was 10, each of those things would be 8. And you can cross them out because they would divide to 1. These you can't cross out, even though they look pretty similar. One's a plus, one's a minus. Think about if x was 10 there. This would be 11. This would be 9. They definitely do not divide to 1. So what we need to say is that that in simplest form is just x plus 1 over x minus 1. All right. This next one we write in factored form. Two binomials again because there's no common factor in that, but you can write it as x plus 3, x plus 6. The bottom, the denominator, that is actually a difference of squares. x squared minus 9 it's like a trinomial like this where the middle term is 0. To get the middle term to be 0, we need an x and an x, but we need a plus 3 and a minus 3. x plus 3 times x minus 3 multiplies out to x squared minus 9. What you can cancel from that, of course, is these two x plus 3s, because again, they're identical numbers no matter what x is. You can cross that off. You can't cross anything else off. You can't reduce anything else there, so you're left with x plus 6 over x minus 3. That fraction is equivalent to the one we started with. The last one here, right in factored form, that first thing there, 54x squared minus 6x to the fourth, if I'm writing that in factored form, I am going to take out 6x squared is my common factor. I am going to be left with 9 minus x squared. On the bottom, I'm actually going to take out a 3 because it does have a common factor of 3. It's easier to factor this if you take out a common factor first, take out that 3, instead of trying to break it down into two binomials. I think you'll be able to break it down into two binomials afterwards, but you're best off taking that 3 out first and just saying you have x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now we actually need to factor it one step further because what we have left here this and this can be factored some more. So we'll write it one more time here. We'll leave our 6x squared there but this 9 minus x squared actually is very similar to this x squared minus 9 except that it's backwards. But all that means is I'm going to write my two factors backwards here. 3 minus x and 3 plus x. Just like I had over here x plus 3 x minus 3, it's still a difference of squares. You can write it like that. On the bottom, I'll leave that 3 there and this x squared minus 2 x minus 3, I can make x minus 3 x plus 1. Now it doesn't look like I have much that I can eliminate there, that I can reduce it. I can certainly divide 
these two terms out in front, I can divide them both by three, because there's a six and a three. I can say that this is a two and a one. Now, there's definitely nothing that looks like that. Uh, the only thing you might not realize is actually these, we are going to be able to reduce those. They are actually opposites of each other. If you think about it, 3 minus x and x minus 3. Let's pretend that x was 5. If x was 5, on the bottom we'd have 5 minus 3, which would be 2. On the top you'd have 3 minus 5, which would be negative 2. Negative 2 and 2 divide to negative 1. Whatever x is there, those two things are going to divide to negative 1. If you have two binomials where they're subtracted, two terms subtracted, but they're in the reverse order like that, they're actually opposites of each other. Up here, we're crossing things out because they're the same as each other and they divide to 1. Whereas here, we're going to cross these two out as long as we realize they divide to negative 1. I can put a negative 1 on the bottom. I can put a negative 1 on the top. I can put a negative in just in front of one of these numbers. It doesn't matter as long as I realize that those two things are going to divide to negative 1. So actually what I have here, I'm going to write this as 2x squared from up here, but I'm going to put a negative in front of it. I'm going to put this 3 plus x. Now 3 plus x, it doesn't matter which way you write that because both of those things are positive. 3 plus x, x plus 3 are the same. I'm just going to write it like this because I think it looks better that way, but that doesn't matter. And then we put x plus 1 on the bottom. That's the reduced form of, of that original fraction. And before we finish here, let's just make sure we put a note down here that is important to realize about that idea that opposites divide to negative 1. All right? That's a look at simplifying rational expressions or reducing algebraic fractions. Thank you.